Ooh, a marshmallow. Sure. Eat the mallow, miss out on something better. What do you mean? If you wait and don't eat that mallow until I return, then you will receive something even better than a mere measly mallow. Better than a marshmallow? <laughs> Not one bite. Okay. Come on. <laughs> okay. I don't think he can wait and resist eating that marshmallow, but if he can, I'm going to give him an entire bag of marshmallows. <laughs> All right, here we go. Count to ten. <laughs> Where's the desk? Did you eat the desk? Um, uh, uh, you ate the desk! I didn't eat the marshmallow! Oh. Alright. Oh. I'm Lawson, and I cannot wait to share the story I've got for you today. Actually, I can wait. That's the whole point. And you can wait too. Um, Lawson? Lawson? Patience, Mom! <laughs> Mother? Hmm. Ma'am? Anyway, so, I heard this story from my cousin Tara, who teaches fifth grade. And she showed her class a picture of a dog she rescued from the dog shelter. Oh, look at him, what a face, he's such a cute dog, he's such a good puppy, he's a good dog. Anyhow, Rashida, a student in her class, told my cousin she was inspired to rescue a dog too. So when she gets home, she begs her parents to rescue a dog. Please, 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 please. And she adds, I'll never ask for anything again, ever. And amazingly, Rashida's parents agree. But mom says, only if you take care of it yourself. And Rashida's so excited, she does a happy dance. And she chases her tail like a puppy. But there's one tiny catch. They told her, she had to wait an entire month to adopt the dog. Mm. Rashida's like, I can wait, no problem. But by one week in, Rashida's like, can we get my dog earlier? I hate waiting. This is no fair. And she throws a tantrum. Like a toddler. <laughs> 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 Mom's finally had enough. She puts her foot down. Hard. Mom tells Rashida they need to make a list of things to do. While you wait. And Rashida discovers all sorts of things to work on. She makes healthy dog treats. And tests them herself. She practices how to train a dog. Sit. Stay. Good doggy. She plans out the best route to take her dog for walks on. And she warns the neighbors, there might be a little barking at first. And by the time Rashida's setting up a tiny dog bed, she discovers three weeks have flown by and it's the day to get her dog. And they all live happily ever after. Mostly. So kids, never cuddle a brand new dog without a change of clothes handy. But do remember that patience is waiting until later for what you want now. And I'll see you guys later. Are you gonna say cut? <laughs> cut! Whew! Huh. All right, do we have any snacks?
Sugar, one half cup of butter. Oh, hi there. I'm in a baking class over the internet. What was that, Graham? Oh, uh, nothing. I'm, I'm doing a thing. Can you mute yourself, please? Yeah. Sorry. My instructor is teaching us how to bake a cake from scratch. It won't take long, so just have a little patience, and I'll be right. You should be done mixing the sugar and butter together. So let's move on. Ah! Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. After you've stirred in the eggs, add two teaspoons of vanilla. Gotta catch up. How much vanilla did she say? Hold on a sec. Excuse me. But excuse me, what? Pardon. Uh, how much vanilla did you say? Two teaspoons, Graham, and then you add cups of flour and fun milk. What was that? I, I'm sorry. I missed that last part. I think, oh, I, I think you're frozen. Hello? You're frozen. Maybe I'm frozen. Are we, we were both frozen. Ah, I really don't like it when technology fails me. I'm trying, I'm trying to bake a cake here and you're just, ah! And I have to wait until it unfreezes before I can make my cake. 
you know, sometimes we have to wait for things when we really, really don't want to. Just like in today's story. And sometimes, also like in today's story, we don't wait. I am making this cake. How much milk and flour did she say? I don't know. We'll see you soon. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> the Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verses 24 through 34. When Abraham's son Isaac grew up, he married a girl named Rebecca, but it didn't seem as though they'd be able to have children. Please God, give us children. But God answered Isaac's prayers and Rebecca became pregnant with twins. Isaac, I'm pretty sure they're having a wrestling match in here. Oh, definitely boys. Rebecca asked God about the struggle she could feel. He told her, Two nations are in your body. One nation will be stronger than the other. The older son will serve the younger one. When it was time for the babies to be born, they came out fighting. Esau was born first. He came out with a strong set of lungs and a head full of red hair. His brother Jacob was born moments later, still holding on to Esau's heel. How on earth did he manage that? The brothers shared the same birthday, but as they grew, that was about the only thing they had in common. Esau loved to roam far out into the wilderness. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more. Jacob preferred the comforts of home. The sun is so hot, I'll just take a little nap in the tent. Esau loved to hunt wild animals. That is one excellent wildebeest. Jacob preferred a different type of hunting. Not you, not you. Ha, <laughs> the perfect ripe honeydew melon. One fine morning, Esau headed out into the wilds in search of adventure and some nice juicy venison. <laughs> I'll feast tonight. But Esau went all morning without spotting a single rabbit. Ugh, should have packed a lunch. In the afternoon, he tracked a deer for hours, but he missed his chance as the deer sprang away. Ah! At last, Esau headed for home, defeated. He was tired and irritated and so hungry he could eat an entire woolly mammoth. Must eat food. As Esau neared camp, a delicious smell wafted out to greet him. Food! Jacob had been home all day, resting and plucking his favorite herbs from his garden. A little coriander, some dill. As evening approached, Jacob used his savory herbs to whip up a tasty red lentil stew and a batch of fresh, buttery bread. This will crisp up nicely on the hot stones. By the time Esau had arrived in camp, Jacob's stew was simmered to perfection, and the bread was hot and crusty. Food! Food! Esau lunged for the stew cauldron, ready to grab a bowl, but Jacob blocked his path. Not so fast. Step aside, I'm hungry. Clearly. Just let me have some of that red stew. Certainly. Esau tried to dive for the stew pot again. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Just one itty bitty thing. What? Well, first, uh, give me the rights that belong to you as the oldest son. Esau spent more time listening to his stomach than his brain. So in that moment, his stomach won out. Look, I'm dying of hunger. If I die, those rights are pointless anyway. Now give me that stew. Esau sprang forward once more. Ah, promise to give me your rights. Fine. Fine what? Fine, I promise. Promise what? I promise to give you my rights as the oldest. Cool, help yourself. Jacob stepped aside as Esau hurled himself at the stew pot. Stew! 
Esau happily gorged himself on rich stew and fresh bread. But as his stomach filled up, he had time to stop and think again. Esau had just traded the rights of a lifetime for a meal that would only last him a few hours. Let me give you a little advice. Don't bake angry. Instead of making a cake, you end up making a mess. That's what happens when you lose patience. You make choices you normally wouldn't make and it ends up costing you. Losing patience ended up costing Esau his birthright. His brother Jacob ended up being in the family line of Jesus, so who knows what all Esau missed out on by being impatient. When we don't learn to have patience, we get frustrated easier. With ourselves, with others, with technology. There's really nothing good that can come from being impatient. So think about that when you're waiting for your turn on a video game, or when you're waiting to say something while someone else is talking, or when you're waiting for the internet to hurry up and start working again. Having patience is better than losing it. Slow down. Or you could hurt yourself or someone else. Or you could end up covered in cake batter. <laughs> Here's the one thing to remember today. If you don't wait, it could cost you. If you need help waiting, ask someone you trust to come alongside you Bro, and see- are you there? Oh! Here. <laughs> You're not frozen anymore! I lost you there for a minute. Technical difficulties. I see. How's your cake? Uh... I think I'm gonna need another lesson. Very well. Same time next week? Sure. I can wait. I may have the place cleaned up by then. Pardon? Uh, nothing. It's a... thing. I'll see you next time. So, how much flour was I supposed to use? Two cups. How much did you use? All of it. Ah, uh, no, that was wrong. Everybody, I'm John and I'm Brandon and welcome to the so-and-so show you've been waiting a whole week to see this show Thank you for your patience. Mm. I know you won't be disappointed <laughs> Did somebody say manners? Uh, no. no I am Melinda manners and I can always tell when my help is needed I can sense when someone is being manly And when someone is not. Oh, oh yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the chair. We're so, yeah. <laughs> my dear boys, what seems to be the problem today? Uh, no, no problem. We're just trying to get the show rolling. So. Patience, my dear boys, patience. It's one of the most important manners. I wrote an entire symphony on patience once. Oh, is that <clears> right? Let, let's. <clears throat> Nice. Yeah, I feel like mm. I'm learning so much from that. Oh, that's just the tip of the ice cube. Oh, no, that's not the uh, way that. Uh, uh. If you want to be manly, don't speak out, just sit quietly. Don't correct or presume, just sit tight and listen to me. Ooh. 
Now, I meant what I said about sitting tight. Shoulders back, boys. It is unmannerly to slouch. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Better? So, uh, Melinda, now that you're here, what do you like to do for fun? Oh, so many things. There's nothing unmannerly about having fun, after all. I keep my favorite things with me at all times. Let's see. Oh, yes, yes. Hold this, please. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Oh. A ball for baskets. A screen flat for movies. And this electronic sewing box. Wow, you certainly do know how to have fun. How did you pull all of this out of that bag? I may be delicate in my manners, but I am a strong woman. Manners and strength are like peas and carrots. They go together like deserts and ferrets. How do deserts and ferrets go together? Now, my most favorite fun to have is the kind that you can really learn from. Ooh. Ooh. Let's play a little game I like to call Bake and Wait. Our preparations are complete. Now we simply need to insert the pan into the oven. And in 27 short minutes, we can enjoy some delicious light bulb heated balls of cookie dough. 27 minutes? Hey, this may take a while. You may want to speed through. Let's eat! Actually, now the cookies have to sit in the cooling chamber for five minutes. Oh no, thank you! Mmm! Mmm! Oh. Wow! <laughs> it would be unmannerly for me to say I told you so. So I'll just sing it. Being patient is always right, but you didn't listen, for you're not so bright. It's Baba Story Time and Kellen. Hey guys. Hey Kellen. What's up today, Kellen? Well, today we're looking at something that happened in the very first book of the Bible. That's right. Genesis, specifically Genesis chapter 25. This is the story of two twin brothers, Jacob and Esau. It wasn't my fault. Jacob tricked me. Um, what's going on? You can't prove anything, Esau. Yes, I can. Tricky McTricker face. That's not my name. It should be. Okay, okay, slow down. I think we might need some kind of judge to handle this. You have just stepped into the courtroom of Judge Trudy. The cases are biblical. The people are historical. The courtroom is not real at all. This is Judge Trudy. Just to be clear, this courtroom did not appear in the Bible. Oh, I'll take it from here, Kellen. So, Esau says here in your case file that you were born first. So you got your family's rights and inheritance. Is that correct? That's correct. I was born first. It is my birthright. Mine. Hmm. Well, a birthright is a really big deal. It means you'll get more of your father's wealth and property. And that you'll become leader of the family. Yeah, that's right. But Jacob, you stole the birthright from your older brother, correct? No, I did not steal it. He sold it to me. Fair and square. The, the trickster! At it again! You were the one who made the trade! Order! I need to know the real story. Bailiff, roll the security footage. Jacob, quick, I'm insanely hungry. Feed me some of that stew. Sure, but first you have to sell me your birthright. Look, 
I am dying of hunger. What good are those rights to me now? Promise me. Promise me you'll sell me your rights. Fine. I can't wait any longer. I promise to give you my birthright. Wait, Esau! Did you not even value your birthright? I was hungry. Oh, but you didn't have one bit of patience. You could have waited and eaten something else later. Let me ask you something. Was the stew worth it? It was okay. Taste less, but for a moment. But your birthright would have affected generations. It seems to me, Esau, that your complaint against your brother is your own fault. I cannot rule in your favor. You made your choice. Court is adjourned. This has been Judge Trudy. Even though there's no way that was the real Jacob and Esau, Judge Trudy summed it up well. Esau did not value his rights as the firstborn son. Being impatient made him sell something that was worth more than we can imagine for the price of one little bowl of stew. Bummer. Seriously. You know, being impatient can actually cost you. Totally. When we're not patient, we rush in without thinking about the consequences. Oh, I know. I bent my tongue. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I think we can avoid a lot of problems if we just pause and think before we act. There's a lot we can miss out on when we're not willing to wait. It's good to hear. Thanks, Kellen. Yeah, thanks. You got it. I'll see you guys next time. I think I've ended that today. Put that away, please. Sorry. Reveal the question. What could you miss out on by not waiting? Yeah, like when you eat snacks before dinner and then you're not hungry and it turns out to be your favorite meal. Uh, that's a bummer. Yeah, or you can miss out on spending time with your friends who are running late because you didn't want to wait for them. Or maybe something even more drastic like an Esau's case. Mm -hmm. Talk about it together and we'll see you next time. I'm John. And I'm Brandon. And this was The, the So and So Show. Show. Keep going. Nice. We're really coming into it now. <laughs> <laughs> Now it's time for the big finish. Oh, I left the blowtorch on. <laughs> <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs>